Okay, good afternoon. As faculty advisor of the Alpha Omega chapter of Pi Theta Epsilon Honor Society, it is my pleasure to welcome students, friends, family, special guests, faculty, and staff to the 2024 ceremony for our newest members, our third group of candidates since AOTA's acceptance of Wingate University's Doctor of Occupational Therapy program to sponsor an Occupational Therapy Honor Society. I'd like to begin by introducing our dedicated PTE officers, Pi Theta Epsilon officers, Catherine Taylor, President, Savannah Horton, Vice President, Emma Brewer, Secretary, and Heather Barsikoff, Treasurer. They and the other PTE members, show us where you are, have done a tremendous job planning this induction ceremony and I'm honored to be part of it. I would like to also acknowledge the Wingate University Doctor of Occupational Therapy program faculty and staff who have been instrumental in modeling and supporting the love of learning in all its forms that continues to raise the standard of professionalism and advance the occupational therapy field of knowledge. Will you please stand? Faculty and Lisa. we have a very special guest who will be offering what I am sure will be a very inspiring and motivating remarks to start off the evening. It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Melissa Sweetman, Director of Wingate University's Doctor of Occupational Therapy Program. Hello everyone. According to the American Occupational Therapy Foundation, a primary mission of Pi Theta Epsilon is to support the practice of authentic occupational therapy by promoting research, leadership, and scholarly activities. I want to spend a few minutes talking about each of these important concepts. First, what is authentic occupational therapy? In her 1966 Eleanor Clark Slagle lecture, Elizabeth Yerksa identified authentic occupational therapy as being based upon a commitment to the client's realization of his own particular meaning and involving the client. I'm sure that by this point in your education, you fully understand the importance of choosing occupations that are meaningful to the client as both the means and the end, as well as using a client-centered approach. We have to be careful that we do not impose our own values and beliefs about what is important upon our clients, but rather allow the client to guide our selection of therapeutic interventions. It has always been my habit to actively engage clients in the goal setting process. Some of you have heard me tell this story before, uh, so bear with me for just a minute. But I once had a client that told me that bed making was the most important occupation that she would like to return to before going back home. Trust me when I tell you that is not a value of mine. I never would have thought to write a goal for bed making. So I, I, it really confused me with this client. And ranking it as the most important occupation, I just, I can't imagine. So you see, the client then proceeded to tell me a story. She told me that as a child, her mother insisted that as soon as she woke up, her feet hit the floor and she had to make her bed first. After she did this, then she could go on with, with getting the rest of her day started. So for this, this client, this occupation became such an important part of her routine that at above 70 years of age, she still felt that it was really a part of her, her identity and that her day could not get started on the right foot until she made her bed. While I may have believed that regaining her ability to brush her teeth while standing at the sink or gathering her clothes while and getting dressed independently were more important, I still allowed the client's values to guide our sessions rather than my own. This is just one example of authentic occupational therapy. Each Wednesday in our student-led clinic, 
I'm amazed to witness and hear stories of the amazingly creative ways that you all customize your interventions to meet the client's needs and preferences. I've seen hand, a handmade pool table. I've seen a fake alpaca for shearing, woodworking materials, even nuts and bolts screwed into the underside of a, of a piece of wood so that a mechanic could get back to his uh, learning how to use his tools on his back again. This is authentic occupational therapy. The next portion of the Pi Theta Epsilon mission I'd like to discuss is that of promoting research. As far back as the original constitution for the National Society for the Promotion of Occupational Therapy, which is the precursor to AOTA that was developed back in 1917, research related to the therapeutic use of occupation was encouraged. In 1998, in an Issue Is column within the American Journal of Occupational Therapy, Diane Parham uh, argued that the proper domain of occupational therapy research is the study of occupation and its applications to healthcare. She placed emphasis upon studying the meaning of occupation and how occupations are valued and completed by human beings. Parham at argued that only after having a good understanding of the core concept of occupation can we then begin to apply the therapeutic use of occupation in practice to promote health outcomes. Fast forward to 2011, and the American Occupational Therapy Association, together with the American Occupational Therapy Foundation, published an official occupational therapy research agenda. The purpose of this agenda was to outline the priorities for occupational therapy research. The highest priority was placed on the categories of intervention research, translational research, and health services research. By focusing research that validates occupation-based interventions, we can help with the intent of the most recent healthcare reform. That is, we can be sure that we're providing the most effective interventions in the most cost-effective manner while improving the experiences of our clients. This also helps us live up to the AOTA's distinct value of OT statement that reads, occupational therapy's distinct value is to improve health and quality of life through facilitating participation and engagement in occupations, the meaningful, necessary, and familiar activities of everyday life. Occupational therapy is client-centered, achieves positive outcomes, and is cost-effective. The series of evidence-based practice courses guided by Dr. Christine McConnell and opportunities for research participation to which you are exposed here at Wingate lay the groundwork for you. While still a student, I challenge you to embrace these opportunities to learn about the research process and take an active role in contributing to our profession's body of knowledge. I encourage you to always maintain a sense of curiosity and an appreciation for scholarly inquiry. The next topic of importance to Pi Theta Epsilon is leadership. Leadership is a concept that is near and dear to my heart. I've taught leadership at the uh, doctoral level for 12 years. I love to talk about the topic. I love to teach the topic. I love to practice the topic. I love it so much that in 2017, I went back to school and, and completed a PhD in leadership. Um, so I, I find every opportunity I can every day to learn more about leadership. A few years back when Dr. Jenny Stoffel was president of the AOTA, she was very vocal about her challenge to every occupational therapy practitioner to embrace our roles as leaders and was instrumental in helping to establish some outstanding leadership development in initiatives throughout the AOTA. This concept that every one of us can be a leader is new for some. Too often we believe that only those who hold a titled position are leaders. Actually, emergent leaders can sometimes be even more influential and powerful in a good way than titled leaders. Those of you who are in cohort four have heard this in my leadership classes very semester. So emergent leaders are those who don't hold a titled position, yet those individuals who rise to the occasion when the situation demands. These are also the people that seem to be opinion leaders or those to whom others look for support. Additionally, I argue that assuming the role of an occupational therapist automatically places you in a leadership position. After all, as OTs, we lead our clients through the rehabilitation process every day, 
coaching them, supporting them, guiding them to the shared vision of wellness and participation. I would bet that as the top 35% of your class, you are already viewed as a leader by your classmates. How many of you have organized a study group, planned a social activity to relieve a bit of school stress, designed a service project, or maybe you volunteered to lead a class group project? You see, leadership activities may be on a grand scale and come with a title, or they may be informal and behind the scenes. Some examples, be a mentor, join a committee, run for an office, share your knowledge and passion for OT by speaking to high schoolers or writing a blog, or how about volunteering for an NCOTA or AOTA committee? Once you graduate, the opportunities will continue. Maybe you'll run for an NCOTA office, write an article, teach a class, become a clinical fieldwork educator. The opportunities really are endless. Once you can see yourself as the leader that you truly are, the sky is the limit. The final component of Pi Theta Epsilon mission is to promote scholarly activities. You might not have had the opportunity to learn about a wise man named Ernest Boyer just yet. I'll bet cohort five, uh, four learned about him in, in your scholarship of teaching and learning class. He's highly regarded as an expert on scholarship. In a landmark publication, Boyer described four types of scholarship discovery, integration, application, and teaching. The scholarship of discovery is what most people think of when they hear the word research. It's the act of developing new knowledge. I already talked a good bit about research, so I'll move on to the next form of scholarship. The scholarship of integration involves making connections across various disciplines to create new insights. Think about what we can learn from our multidisciplinary friends, such as physical therapists, speech therapists, neurologists, psychologists, and the list goes on. Think about how we can learn from them about how our clients perform their occupations. The scholarship of application is just what it sounds like. It's the application of knowledge. It's taking what is learned through the scholarship of discovery and integration and putting it into practice. When we are working as evidence-based practitioners and utilizing interventions that have been proven to be effective through research, we are acting as scholars employing the scholarship of application. Lastly is the scholarship of teaching, which AOTA has adopted as the scholarship of teaching and learning. In his work, Boyer recounted Aristotle's famous statement that teaching is the highest form of understanding. Sure enough, one cannot teach without first possessing knowledge of the subject. However, this is not a static process. One must continuously seek to learn in order to teach. What you are learning now in school is only the beginning. The scholarship of teaching not only applies to professors or teachers in some sort of school, but think about how much teaching an occupational therapist must do on a daily basis. We teach our colleagues, our customers, our community, and most definitely our clients. In conclusion, I hope that I have provided you with a little more insight on the important mission of Pi Theta Epsilon and how these concepts of research, leadership, and scholarship can help you develop the practice of authentic occupational therapy. For your time remaining in this program, I challenge you to embrace these concepts and act on these values that you are committing to today with your in induction into the Pi Theta Epsilon. I would like to congratulate each of you for your academic accomplishments and for your acceptance into this prestigious honor society. Being a member of this elite group is not only a great honor, but it also comes with great responsibility. I urge you to contemplate the information I've shared with you today. As you continue your education, immerse yourselves in the potential that lies before you in relation to research, leadership, and scholarship. Hold on to your passion about occupation and occupational therapy, and embrace your future as an occupational therapy scholar. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sweetman, for those very inspirational remarks. It's wonderful. Now we will begin the induction ceremony.
by appearing before us, you have signified your desire to become a member of Pi Theta Epsilon. Each of you should understand fully the meaning of its name, its purposes, and its ideals. President Pi is the first letter of the Greek word for advancement. Theta is the first letter in the Greek word for therapeutic. Epsilon is the first letter of the Greek word for occupation. Therefore, Pi Theta Epsilon stands for advancement in occupational therapy. The purpose of the Honor Society will be to recognize and encourage scholastic excellence in occupational therapy students, to contribute to the advancement of the field of occupational therapy through scholarly activities, to provide a vehicle for professional entry-level students enrolled in accredited programs in occupational therapy to exchange information and to collaborate regarding scholarly activities. Pi Theta Epsilon strives to instill in its members the ideal of respect for learning and commitment to scholarship throughout one's professional life. By inviting you to join us, we have conferred upon you an honor and an obligation. The honor is in recognition of your integrity, your high standards of scholarship, and the promise of your future as one of achievement. In accepting the invitation to become a member of this honor society, you have taken upon yourself the obligation to devote your efforts to the advancements of occupational therapy through scholarship and research, and to maintain a high maintain, maintenance of the high standards of Pi Theta Epsilon. Okay, will the new members please stand and come up when your name is called? Ashley Jones. Madison Moore. Alexis Fuente. Samantha Real. Claire Surgot. <laughs> Brittany Turlington. Reagan Vaughn. And I want to clarify, it's Emily Watkins, not Watson, as your program says. <laughs> so we will correct that for her. Emily Watkins.
we are completing the requirements of an education. We are learning how to learn. The real education is just beginning. The application and broadening of knowledge, testing our interest and diligence in our work. We are challenged today and in every coming day to go beyond the requirements of an education, to continue to learn for the knowledge and growth it brings to us and to help others meet their needs to the best of our abilities. Excellence in purpose and in scholarship is the key to, to opportunity and carries with it vast rewards to ourselves and others. This honor society, Pi Theta Epsilon, challenges us for excellence. Will all new, current, honorary members and alumni please stand and join us in repeating the pledge after me. <laughs> Aware of the high calling of the scholar, I'll say it, and then you say it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Aware of the high calling of the scholar. Aware of the high calling of the scholar. And the great opportunity of service through occupational therapy. And the great opportunity of service through occupational therapy. I hereby pledge my efforts to further the purposes. I hereby pledge my efforts to further the purposes. To uphold the ideal of Pi Theta Epsilon. and to prove myself a worthy member of this honor society. The back row can be seated. Your candles represent the light of knowledge and the warmth you will impart by sharing your knowledge with others. As members of Pi Theta Epsilon Alpha Omega Chapter, we ask you to carry this light with you in your career as an occupational therapist. But for now, you can blow out your candles and be seated. You have repeated the words of a pledge. The honor of this is held within you. You can carelessly toss it aside or you can make it meaningful, a meaningful part of your studies and outside activities. You can, what you decide will influence the other members of your honor society and those outside of your honor society. It then becomes your responsibility to integrate the pledge you have just taken and fulfill the goals as you are able. In this way, the integrity of this organization, members past and present, and occupational therapy as a profession will be strengthened and maintained. And now, Dr. Sweetman will offer some closing remarks. As I wrap up, I wanna share just a couple things um, about our chapter uh, here at Wingate. I want to acknowledge the St. Catherine's Challenge. Um, this is a fundraising effort. Um, and, and we were recognized at the National Conference in Orlando. Um, I snapped a picture of the recognition and sent it to Dr. McConnell um, because the, our university participated in that challenge. And it's a student-led fundraising event that um, supports the American Occupational Therapy Foundation, um, their intervention research grants. Um, the challenge was launched in 2013 and has raised over $450,000 to support these grants. Um, the challenge also aims to support new research that will build evidence that's vital to occupational therapy students' practice. And um, last year, two of our students, PTE members, um, Daisy Williams and Taylor Crum, Daisy earned first place and Taylor second in um, scholarship, their scholarship recipients through PTE. Um, they were research grants recipients, so they were able to use their funding to help with their capstone um, projects that they just completed last Friday. Uh, so so this, this fundraising effort, actually, we were very fortunate. Some of it came back to our own um, chapter. So these, these activities that you do as a member of PTE are really important and do make a big difference, and sometimes it, it may be a difference for one of you. 
Um, so thank you for, for being here. Congratulations to those of you who are new inductees tonight. Um, we'd like to ask that those of you um, who are members of PTE will remain um, up here. We're going to get a group photo. We'll do some with Cohort 5 only and then some with everybody. Um, and, then, um, and then we'll just socialize with the family and friends that have come here to, to visit. So congratulations again and thank you for being here.